Last time on Curse of Strahd. After defeating Babala Saga, though at great cost, the party find the symbol of Ravenkind and head for safety and rest. En route, they meet up with Esmeralda once again, and she tells them of safety in the nearby town of Kresik, as well as a powerful ally. She introduces Alvaski, a strange man and member of Kresik's clergy. The party agree to travel with her and make their way to Kresik without issue. On arrival, they are given a home to rest in, and Alvaski and the Maya unnerve everyone else around them. During the night, Rose believes she dreams about Shadow Beyond the Veil, contacting her through a mirror, begging Rose to come to Castle Ravenloft and kill her and end her suffering as a creature of undeath. Rose soon realizes that this was no dream and softly weeps, clutching Shadow's amulet and Jesper's dagger close to her chest. As a new day begins, the party explore Kresik and Tatiana asks Dog's body to accompany her to a small pond nearby. Here she shows Dog's body a vision of himself before his madness and curse of lycanthropy as a valiant protector and assures him that he can become that man again. He asks Tatiana to think on it and the party heads to the monastery to meet with the mysterious abbot who rules Kresk or Kresik, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And that, my friends, is where we begin today. Bam. Big, exciting times. Uh, Bam. So, you find yourselves. Uh, I'm going to bring up my notes just so that I've got them to hand. Uh, playing you Curse find of yourselves. Strut. What's that? That's a strut. It's three right, notes. Okay. Your joke was like half lost as I was uh, doing stuff, so I didn't actually hear it. Uh. Weird. It was a funny joke. It was very funny. Was it a funny joke? I'm glad it was a funny joke. Everyone's laughing. <laughs> you are currently stood <laughs> in a large main hall of this old monastery at the very top hill of Kresik, looking down on the town below. The main hall is quite large with arched uh, leaded glass windows. You can see that there is a large fireplace uh, above which hangs a golden disc engraved with the symbol of the sun. There is a wooden staircase that climbs to an upper level uh, and then another in a uh, staircase descending down into darkness uh, opposite it. There is a large wooden table with several chairs and sat in one of them uh, is this very beautifully handsome man in his kind of mid-20s to early 30s uh long flowing blonde hair um looking at you with this very serene face uh, and he has introduced himself as the abbot uh and we it's been you know we, we kind of mentioned a few things last time that he spoke of but we'll kind of just go through them again uh he kind of looks at all of you and nods his head I am pleased that you have made your way to me here in Kresik. You may call me the abbot. I help protect this town, as well as aid those lost souls who reside here. Esmeralda tells me that you are enemies of the devil of Strahd. And to that end, I believe that we can help one another. Do you have any questions my children mm. nah now we're good how are you gonna betray us um sure <laughs> that's not a question that's not a question <laughs> i didn't think it pretty much <laughs> i sense you are quiet um. you seem distracted it's been a very long day and Barovia's. we've lost a lot Barovia forgive me for being blunt tapes. to you but how can we trust you given that anyone else we have trusted has died along the way ah. or become some Barovian horror mm. I can see that you have suffered I in terms of my life I have lived here a long time. I have survived Barovia's madness. I am more than I appear. I am not filled with darkness or hate. I am not feel, filled with fear, only of light 
I am a blessed servant of the Morning Lord, sent here to help rid Barovia of its darkness. Trust, trust is a difficult thing. I can assure you, I am an enemy of Strahd's. My Lord has given me some insight. I have seen visions, terrible, dark dreams. I have seen Strahd building something in his castle, some great machine. I see flames, and more importantly, I see Strahd escaping Barovia. This cannot be allowed to pass. Strahd's darkness here is limited, constrained, for even him, even the Lord of the Mists cannot go beyond them. But if Strahd were to escape these bonds, to travel to other worlds, he would bring such misery and suffering that it would pale in comparison to what is here. I have my flock. They will serve me. And I believe that we will need to march on Castle Ravenloft. Assault it. Put an end to what the devil is doing. My hope is that all of you, foes, enemies of Strahd, would join us in this grand crusade to rid Barovia of this darkness and bring light to it once more. Uh, I bow deeper at that, um, as if to obviously uh, agree with what oh. he's saying. Alvaski, my son. And he just kind of steps over and like lightly, you know, in a way that a priest does, lately kind of places a, he a hand on your head. Rise, you do not need to kneel. You will be a great warrior in this crusade. It is my hope that you will travel with our companions, assure them of our intentions, show them that we can be trusted. Of course, yes. The Morning Lord will ensure that you are rewarded for such efforts. I, I need none, only to help. Truly, you are a blessed child. Just kind of cups your face. It is you who bless me, Abbot. And what aid can I offer to the rest of you? There is something I would like to ask your assistance with before this crusade can begin. Something important to me. But if there is something that perhaps I can help you with, I have magic. I have power. I have the safety of these very walls, food, drink, hearth, and home. What you require. Hmm. To know the full power of your force that we would be marching with, we need mm. to know what we have to go against him. He is a powerful being. We've faced him before. We've lost people to him. We don't want to yes. go ahead and march on that castle without a very clear plan. Indeed. And it is to this that I have spoken with the one you call Esmeralda, this vampire hunter. She tells me that you carry with you a weapon, a weapon of sunlight. This, in this rests our great hope. Strahd is powerful, yes. Strahd, even I alone could perhaps not face him, but warriors who have faced him before, who are armed with such a weapon, I believe that you have a chance. What is a greater threat is that Strahd commands uh, an army of devils, of undeath, that he can send against you to whittle you down, prevent you from getting close to the beast himself, finding him in whatever lair he has made for himself in that ruin and burning him in light to that end my flock my people they are warriors but also i have created my children alvaski here is one of my earlier children 
But the others, and he holds up a hand, and you see this light, this orb of light just swell in the palm of his hand, and then whoosh, it just kind of erupts and it explodes. And appearing within the room, almost seeming to descend from a sky that you cannot see, uh, is this pale humanoid figure. Very muscular, androgynous in its form. Uh, long, kind of golden hair, dressed in plain robes. You can see a pair of like angelic wings extending from their back, uh, you know, completely covered in these like almost like white bandages and robes. Um, and they just bow their heads to the abbot. Uh, and he kind of reaches up and tenderly is just like, You have answered my summon, child. Have you found any sign of our enemy? I have not, abbot. I have scanned far, but seen nothing of what you seek. Join the others for your meal. We shall speak later. They carry with them my light, a powerful tool against the devil. Mm. You have an army of angels? Army. All this no. time? I'm sadly that an army is even beyond my skill. I have four of these children, plus Alvaski, who was younger. The four of them are no match for an entire army by themselves, but with my flock, I believe that we could buy you time to enter the castle, to seek out Strahd. For once Strahd is gone, his minions, his creations, his devil spawn go with him. You make children from your light? Human have have light? You are How? a curious thing. You are... I do not know what to think of you. You are neither living nor fully dead. You are the land, but you are also something else. What are we you? Are the we are the Maya. We are the Maya. And you reek of old magic. Older perhaps than even my own. I instill them with my light. I do not create them from it. I give it to them as a gift, as a weapon. As a father may pass down an axe to his child. As I have done with Alvaski, show them, my son, the light, the gift that I gave you. Yeah, I'll conjure a radiant sunbolt uh, in a very dexterous flowing motion. So you watch as, yeah, Alvaski kind of almost punches up towards the air, like he channels, you see his skin glow, this light almost pulsing through him, and then when he punches upward, this blast of sunlight, of well, radiant energy, it's not sunlight, this radiant energy blast kind of <sighs> erupts from his hand, uh, like a beam of magic. Um, he just watches Alvaski then returns to a former pose. I think my head would like snap to that like <gasps> light <laughs> like a moth yeah. to a flame just... yeah it's not sunlight it's not the same as the sun sword but yeah. it's radiant energy like you feel goodness or like light coming off of it um... are, are you responsible for his um... cuckoo there's nothing wrong with our Vasky Kind of Are hangs you his head so a little different bit at that? Are you so different? You have wandered through Barovia. Have you not heard voices that call out to you from nowhere? The dark? He just seems a bit more traumatized. This, you see what Strahd has done to the people of this world, of this land. That is what I was sent to fix, and I have done so, in my small way. Is this enough? And he looks at Rose. I have shown you some of the forces I have to bear. There are perhaps 
30 villagers here, all who can be armed and armoured. Along with yourselves, this Esmeralda, this vampire hunter, I believe it gives us a chance. You say you need our help with something. What is that task? I would like your help with something. I am loath to leave Kresk without... without finding something precious to me. A woman, a girl, was taken from me. Vasilika, my beloved. She was meant to be what fixed Barovia. She was meant to end Strahd's madness. But he has fallen far more than I could have ever expected. She is perfect. So innocent, so uncorrupted by this world. But some foolish boy from the village has manipulated her, tricked her, put thoughts in her mind. He has done something. I found blood in her chambers. And they were gone. They have fled Kresk. I would like Silica to be returned. Do you have any further information about where they might have gone to? My children are warriors, not hunters or trackers. And I am fearful to leave this place undefended without my light. I'm afraid the woods in this area are dangerous. Many wolves prowl it, and many of Strahd's minions lurk. You could examine Vasilika's room, perhaps? See if there is something that I or my children have missed? Or perhaps outside the city walls you may find something. They would need to travel by foot. They do not have the capability to fly. Perhaps you may be able to locate them. My Vasilika. I worry. She is so innocent to the world, she would not understand the danger that she is in. She's vulnerable. What of the person she's left with? He has taken Vasilika. He is a kidnapper. I would, if you can bring him back for justice, that seems fitting. But I am more concerned with Vasilika herself. Was he known to you? Is he just someone who came in? Some boy. He is young. A teen, perhaps. Late. Not quite a man. But he was supposed to be faithful. He has gone against all of my teachings in doing this. I believe, I fear, I fear that perhaps he has been manipulated by Strahd. Perhaps he has been sent to take Vasilika from me. Perish such a thought. Do this. Do this for me and my children, my armies, my magic is yours. If you like, I could return one you've lost to you. I have that power. If you can bring me their remains, the Morning Lord may yet restore them to life. Sadly, the ones we lost, there were no remains to bring. Ah. Oh. I mean, the, there's the dragons, Rose. The dragons, I think only one had remains, didn't they? Yeah. Ziki's remains, there were. Uh, yes, Bruce was, was it crushed into a pulp. Dog's, dog's body oh. buried um, Zeros where the spear oh, was. Zeros, but yeah. Zeke didn't. Yeah. Uh, Jesper, I don't think was fully crushed. There was enough of him. There were like there was body parts left for Jesper. He wasn't like turned to ash or anything like that. Yeah, he was kind of cut, turned to gruel a little bit, wasn't he? Yeah, he was he a little bit. A bit squishy. You described it that he was. 
<laughs> well, because who was it that killed him? It was um, it wasn't me. Madame Yaga. Yeah, you just hit him with the sun sword, didn't you? Yeah, but then he was crushed by the the tentacle vine things. Oh right, he's still he's still there's still body parts there. If I I've yeah, perhaps given the wrong impression, like there's definitely there's pieces of him left. Um, for sure, it's not like he's been disintegrated. It's the eyeball, Abbott. <laughs> what can you do with that? <laughs> Maybe a finger. There's oh, like a. Like I would eyes. say as long as there's like a brain and a heart, <laughs> which there would be. You could so probably annoying. use that. I was thinking about picking up his eye and replacing my own with it. Damn it. <laughs> Why didn't you? That would have been so cool. I picked up a, like a human baby thing instead. And kept that for like 20 <laughs> minutes. Uh, human enough for the Maya. Well. I need only a few remains, but that offer still remains for you. If we go near a place where we can find those, then we will try. But I, I don't know what you can do. They were, they were all killed in quite gruesome ways. Well, the offer is there. Or if perhaps one of you should fall, I have the power to restore you. I only ask for your aid in returning a wayward child back to me. We will start with her house, see where we get, and then... She, she was here in the monastery. I can show you her room. We'll start there, then make a plan as a group and let you know. Of course. You are welcome here in Kresk. Whatever you need, whatever you require, my flock will ensure you have food, supplies, equipment, whatever you need. You are welcome to spend your days here as you see fit, but I urge you to consider that Strad, whatever he is building, I fear that it is not long until it is complete. I beg you to find Basilica for me. I... I cannot spare the thought of leaving her. We will do what we can, but if she's been out in the wilderness, there is a good chance that she too has been subject to the horrible creatures out there that we have. But we will do what we can. That I taught her a little to defend herself. I can only hope that it is enough until you can find her. Uh, I will show you. Uh, in fact, uh, Alvaski, you know of Vasilika's room. You may show them there. I, I should attend to the other children and make sure they are well. Thank you, travelers. Alvaski will see to any of your needs. And with that, he just stands up and begins making his way to a second pair of doors that lead into other parts of the monastery. And so, my question is, what would y'all like to do? Get snooping. Snooper's gonna snoop. Yeah. Snoop you want to snoop around snoop. the whole monastery, or just go to the room and snoop room? Nah. Snoop room, I guess. Snoop, snoop room, room snoop first. Room. See where it goes. Snoop room. Yeah. Okay. See where the snooping takes us. The oh, snoopy this way. Uh, follow. Yes. So uh, Alvaski will lead you. Do 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 do. Uh, where is her chili? Upstairs? Yeah, I'm just trying to find exactly where. If you go to the bathroom, you've gone too far. <laughs> all right, calm down. There's a lot of text here and I'm trying to read through it all. Um, okay, so Alvaski leads you upstairs. Uh, he takes you to the wooden spiral staircase that leads up, uh, down a, f a few corridors, and leads you to what appears to be a guest room. Um, you can see that there is a kind of wooden desk uh, with a few dainty books on it. Uh, you can see a rather comfortable bed with a knitted blanket, a cushioned chair. Uh, you can see all sorts of not quite toys, but you see things like a quite a little pretty mirror 
you see uh, what appears to be makeup, like a set for makeup on the desk as well. You can see that there is a armoire, like a like a wardrobe with dresses and all things kind of hung up in it. But it is very plain, and there's not really much personality to the space. Um, apart from a few books and this makeup, it really is, and the blanket, it's unblemished in any way. Um, I've asked you to lead you up. The door is not locked. Um, and when you step inside, there is one single window uh, that appears barred um, that leads to uh, maybe a sort of like 15 foot drop down to the uh, the ground below. Um, and that's that's what you see on an initial glance of the room. Hmm. I mean, you mentioned blood. Hmm. Uh, anything? Do you want to go looking anything? for some blood? Oh, I'll go sniffing around for some blood. Blood. Sure. Make me an investigation mm. check. Okay. Okay. Investigation plus zero. Here we go. Oh, it's a four. It's a four. I mean, there is blood. Uh, you just can't really tell anything more from it. So, just by the corner of the bed, there is a not. It's not a lot of blood. Um, not enough that somebody would be seriously, like, you know, bleeding out from, but it's still a lot. Like, this was a fairly nasty wound that somebody was dealt. Um, maybe like a cut. You can't really tell anything apart from there is a, a, a good amount of blood here um, on the floor. It's kind of stained the stone floor, kind of turning that murky brown in color where it's dried onto the stone itself. Can I get maybe an idea of how long it's been there? Sure. Um, I'd say Rose being a ranger, you don't really need to do a check for this. Um, it's not sticky, so it has dried. It must be at least several, like a few days old. There's no kind of stickiness to it. Um, it's been cleaned away as well. You can see that somebody's come in and scrubbed it, um, but it's still left this kind of dark stain on, on the stone itself. Um, yeah, you estimate maybe sort of like three days to a week, something like that. Um, Maybe two um, days. Using my heightened senses, which is uh -huh. uh, advantage on uh, perception checks that rely on hearing or smell, can I mm -hmm. be like a little tracker dog and try and track where the blood goes, maybe? Like, it's going to be it tough because anywhere, it is or? old. It's been washed. Uh, give me a perception check with advantage, um, but this is going to be a pretty high DC. Um, I rolled a 10 as my highest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, nothing. So you do get some sense, but not enough to track anything by. Most of the smells are limited to this room, and then outside of that, it gets a bit too busy. You can smell the musty walls and roof, uh, you know, uh, uh, timbers of the roof of this of this monastery. The whole place has this very odd smell to it, um, almost like chemical in nature, but not quite. And it's kind of masking a lot of things. You do get a sense of, like, a tiny whiff of blood. You also get the scent of perfume, as if somebody had been wearing quite a, a, a fragrant floral perfume um, in this room um, quite recently, like, maybe as, as recently as, like, uh, the, the blood is. Um, it's kind of like, you know, a few days old, the perfume smell. Uh, there is also the smell of straw and hay, um, but you can't track it. You get those kind of, like, lingering notes of the you know, presence that was here in the room, but it's it's long gone. Can I see if there, amongst the makeup and all that, if there's a, a perfume bottle that, that is the same scent as the one I can mm. smell? Yeah, there is. There is like a little kind of like spray bottle of perfume that seems to be uh, match the same sort of smell. Mm. So it's Vasilica, I, I, I guess. Dog's body would in tune that that is probably Vasilica's perfume then. Um, you would make that assumption for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Alvaski, what what do you know about this girl? I know as much as you know. You must have seen her around though, right? Yes. How long she lived here? Time. It's difficult. I'm out. Missions for the abbot. Time is lost in the woods. Time is lost in the shadows. Time, I'm lost. 
My shadow mocks me. Has she been here as long as you've been here? I'm here now, she is not. I don't know. Does does she look like you? Does she look like some of the other people in the flock? I... don't know. Okay. Um... Someone could have gone pretty far in a couple of days here. We should probably start looking for some tracks. Maybe outside this room. I don't think there's much in here. Can I give it another just like search around to see if I can find anything sure. of interest yeah. in the room? Make an investigation check. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ah, poop. Nine. <laughs> Nine. Um, it's a little bit better than the Myers attempt. More also because of your natural things of being a hunter and a tracker and a thing. You don't get the sense that this was like a monster attack or anything like that. The blood, the way it's been sprayed, looks like somebody was attacked with a weapon. Um, but then it seemed to just... There's no more other violence. Like, there's this spray of blood, but there's no other sign of violence. There's no damage to anything else around you. You don't see any chips or marks on the walls or anything like that. The window barred, looking at it, you don't see any signs of that being tampered with. You don't think they went out there. They must have left through sort of the actual monastery itself. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much what you would get with your nine. What are the ways out of the monastery? Is is there areas that are not guarded? Maybe at night that she could have been taken? Do you know that, Alvaski? Through the bars, no. Through this door, the only way. From here, complex. Many places. Though What's we are the here. most secretive way? Out, out of this door, to exit the town. Can you take we us that way? We have no secrets here. The most inconspicuous way. The rear, not the front, the back. Can you take us there? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, okay, well, uh, if are you guys just going to follow Alvaski, or is there anything, the Maya, is there anything you guys want to do, or? I'm just, uh, <clears throat> I'm obsessed with Alvaski right now. Yeah. <laughs> Standing so hard, RN. <laughs> well, do you, you, you want to, like, make any, like, checks or anything, Tom, or is it, like, you're just, like, are you, like, just staring at him intently, or? It's just, I'm still trying to figure out humans in general, and then Alvaski comes right. in. And it's like, yeah, it's just not humans as I know them so far sure. in my three days of being alive. Um, <laughs> alive. Make a um, perception check for me. A perception check. Uh, yeah. Let's. See. If you're watching Alvaski very, very carefully, I will have you make a, a, a perception Ooh, check. Oh, plus four. 22. Ooh. Yeah, okay, that's enough. I see it all. As he's speaking, and as Rose is like questioning him, and he's walking around and things like that, you have noticed something about Alvaski. Something that was kind of partially hidden by the way he wears his robes and his clothing. It's Some of it has slipped. Where he bent down to kneel to the abbot, and then he's gotten up and been moving around, some of the bandages around his neck and one of his arms <laughs> have come loose, and you just happen to spot there are lines of stitching around one arm and around his neck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost like piano well, wire. Thin. Yeah. Yeah, like super no. thin. Like you you <clears throat> only just, like at 20, 22, 21, you've just seen this these two thin lines like around his neck and then around his bicep. Um, and it's only because the bandages have come loose uh, that you've spotted them. Well, other Maya will know that immediately because I spotted it. Um, okay, sure. <laughs> well, I mean, we have the same thoughts. Like, if I spot it, other Maya spots it. Yeah, I've said that yes. you guys have, like, a limited telepathy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
Human um, makes light. Very interesting. Yeah. Man, I love it. But no, I'm not going to say anything to anyone else. Sure. No, that's fine. This land, just, uh, land's weird, you, you know? Yeah. Thank uh, you Alvesky. for your assistance, as always. You are an <laughs> no invaluable member of this party. <laughs> I know. I'll keep that to myself. <laughs> Lovely. I wasn't thanked for slowing down a house. So I'm not going to tell you about Alvaski. <laughs> spite. The Maya has spite. Maya so much the concept quiet. of thanks. <laughs> um, so Alvaski is a weird human. You would, uh, in terms of like not secret ways out, but the easiest way out, um, you can show the the team uh, that they can come down the stairs and that they can make their way. Uh, out into the sort of like main sort of inner courtyard of the monastery. The monastery has its own walls, um, so it's kind of its own kind of separated uh, complex. Um, but showing them that there are, you know, there are sections of the walls that are, you know, could be climbed over. There is also the main gate that um, is maybe watched by just a couple of normal acolytes in in normal robes. They look like villagers uh, who have been positioned there. Rose looking around. If somebody was, if somebody moved at night, they could probably sneak out of here as easily as anybody could, right? Like if they were being quiet and stealthy, people could move out of here. Um, do you want to? If you want to make a check for looking for tracks, that's a survival test. Survival check. I shall. Uh, twenty-one. 21 yeah so <clears throat> what becomes obvious is that not a lot of people move through this courtyard there are definitely you've seen people around not a lot of people coming to and from this front door that leads to the actual abbey itself um which is strange what you do find maybe a couple of days old like two days old is two sets of footprints uh, one quite dainty and small. The other appears to be wearing sort of traveling boots. And the other one is is barefoot. So the tiny uh, petite feet uh, and then a pair of like hunting boots alongside them. And they walk side by side and kind of doing an Aragorn from two towers. You're kind of like checking the ground, seeing the indentations, the weight of where they pressed. It looks like that they stopped and waited um, at the corner behind several bushes for a while. And then they made a very quick run for the main gate. And then it quickly uh, diverts and heads south down to where there is a large hill that begins to slope down and head into the woods around Kresk. Um, the trail is going to become harder to follow in those woods, but you definitely get the sense that about two days ago, two people snuck out of the abbey and then have basically made their way out into the woods. Led away from the battle into Fangorn Forest. <laughs> and so we shall go there, I guess. Cool. Um, I will relay that to the rest of the group after I've done my, my, my snooping. Tell us sure. stuff to the rest of the party. That's useful. It is, isn't it? Nah. <laughs> um. uh, Ismark, because Irina and Ismark are, as always, with you, but they just tend to hang back. Um, Ismark looks at you a bit more cautiously, and he looks at Dog's body and Rose specifically. Uh, if they have made their way into the woods near Kresk, I am feared of what may have become of them. There are there are always wool, stories of wolves in the woods, but around here, and you can see that he's constantly like his eyes flick to Dog's body and then flick to Dog's body again. I hear a tale of wolves that walk like men in these woods. Oh, don't worry about it, mate. I've met them. They're pricks. Uh, you can say it. They're like me, but they're pricks. I was less that it is more that I am afraid that they are the ones that did this to your dog's body, and I know that that is likely not a very pleasant memory. Uh, if we are to go after this girl, we should make sure that we are ready, make sure that there is, if there's anything else we wish to do, if there are supplies we wish to gather, if there, if we wish to seek Esmeralda's aid, we do that here now, before we head into those woods. We should get all the help oh, that we can. If, I, I, honestly, 
I'm not sure there's anything left to find by this point. If they've been out in the woods for two days. But, yeah. I won't lie. Let's... If they're out there with the wolves, yeah, their survival chances are not high. We, as much as I have issues with her, we should probably consider getting Esmeralda. She'd know what to do. She does know how to hunt these creatures, as you do as well, Rose. Um, I say that perhaps we follow the trail. If we see sign that they did not survive, we return as quickly as possible. But um, before we go, we should definitely, like I said, like my like Ismark says, if there's anything that we wish to do before we leave, supplies, uh, weapons... Um, equipment, anything like that. We should give. We should gather it now whilst we can. Um. Dog's body. Your experience is invaluable here too. If you know anything else that might help us, please let us know. We don't want to put anybody in danger, but I know that this might be a, a difficult situation for you. I'm fine. I deal with it by not dealing with it. Um, just don't get bitten, yeah? Don't get bitten. And, um, oh, silver. Lots of silver. Don't like it. Hurts. Well, let's see what we can find then. Oh, sure. buddy. Teach us more of this language you speak of. You call these wolves pricks. We've mm. not heard this word yeah. before. Right. So, uh, you know how Crunchy Meyer over there, and I point at Reemeyer, can do the thorns? Crunchy. The, yeah. That's a prick. Mm. Crunch. It's a prick. It hurts. It's annoying. It's rude. Uh. I hurt. I... Oh, I, I hurt. hurt. Don't do that, love. Don't, no, no. <laughs> do, do you? Do, do, is you prick? Are you prick? What happened to your intelligence in the last like, episode? <laughs> <laughs> is you prick? <laughs> is you prick? <laughs> Minus one Why? to intelligence. <laughs> I can be a prick, yes. Um... <clears throat> I also probably shouldn't be telling you this, <clears throat> but prick is also a reference to male genitalia. Mm. Uh, so it can be used mm. as an offensive term. Uh, you, you have know. a prick. And you are a prick. Uh, yes. I am a prick. I, yes. I can be a prick. I worry that you're, a you're arming the mire with... Um, swear word potential at this point we we're probably it's going into territory exchange. range they're they're going to start um you know what yep yeah, th never mind never mind that's fine are, are, are there more do you have any do you have any swear words that i could learn <laughs> i'm leaving this to you guys i'm not getting involved uh, <laughs> alvaski slams his hand on the wall <laughs> Disrespect the abbot. Find Basilica. That is your task. I'm not disrespecting anyone, apart from the werewolves. Pricks. We're making Disrespect plans time. that... We're making plans that mean that we don't get killed. If we get killed, then Basilica's not coming back. Learning the word prick won't get you killed. He does have point. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I will go and see. Let's go. The abbot mentioned that the people in the town are armed. I will go and see if there's a smith or someone who can. If there are any weapons. Uh, uh, see if we can find this Esmeralda. She may have more. This is where she was the one who I got this silver flail from. Perhaps we can find more of these type weapons there. Uh, arrows or some such for Rose. I don't know what Meyer 
that one insect mire uses, but maybe we find weapon for insect mire. Uh, everyone else seems to have magic, so maybe you are okay. Uh, if I could cool. make a request, please keep all silver away from the dog's body. Thank you. Let's go. Sure. sure. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, if you guys just want to, uh, you guys can just try and gather equipment. Is there anything else that you guys want to get? Do you want to go speak to Esmeralda? Do you want to go and speak to the abbot? What do you want to do? Are we not getting Esmeralda to come with us? Do you want to? In that yeah. case, you can go and find her and talk to her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you find her um, in the house that you guys had stayed in. Uh, she's laid out on the table this long sort of leather, uh, almost like a, a satchel, but it's like rolled up. And so it expands outwards. Um, and inside, when you enter, you can see that she is basically pulling out things like there are all sorts of like, you know, stakes, daggers, uh, crossbow bolts. Um, she set out three kind of clay looking canisters, um, as well as a few kind of glass vials, each kind of engraved with a silver and gold filigree. Um, and she seems to be cleaning weapons and gathering up her equipment and, you know, making sure that it's all prepared and ready to go. Ah, uh, how did your meeting with the abbot go? Uh, as well as could be expected, we are tasked with finding Basilica. And we wanted um, to see if you might be able to who... help us. I don't know who that is, but if is this is this a condition for the abbot's help? Is this something the abbot would like you to do in exchange for their assistance? Yes. Then I will help see it done. We need I think that we genuinely need the abbot if we're to if we're to attack Ravenloft, we need a force to get us there. Uh, getting inside, I think that smaller numbers will be to our advantage, but to get into the castle, to not have gargoyles and uh, vampire spawn swooping down to attack us from above in great numbers, I think we need the abbot and his flock. Uh, so yes, if this is required, I will come and help you locate this this basilica. Did you say who is it? Some some child, some one of his students. Uh, a wayward a woman. child. That terrifying swamp monster. You said a child. A wayward, wayward a child. Wayward child. Kidnapped. Well, by a boy. Sent to the wolves. Hmm. Probably expired. Well, yes. If they're out in the if they're out in the woods, then I'm not going to give. I'm not going to have many chances. But maybe if we can find some body parts, we can appease the abbot. That you know, we've done our best. Um, very well. Uh, are we expecting anything in particular? There's going to be werewolves. You ready for that? She looks at you, dog's body. There's, she smiles and you do not like that smile. It's, it is a, it's a smile of somebody who is going to enjoy killing werewolves, like, a lot. Oh, I'm definitely ready for that. I'm assuming, I know that some of you use magic. Uh, Rose, do you have anything silvered? Not right now. I have the sun sword, but um, well, silver that would should... be useful. Uh, so the sun sword should be more than enough. Uh, werewolves generally, silver is the legendary thing that they are uh, fearful of that bypasses their natural resilience. But any sort of magical weapon will suffice. The sun sword will uh, certainly help you there. I do have some silver arrows. I know that you prefer to use a bow. Would you care for those? I only have about ten. They would I'm more be of a crossbow user myself. Yes, very well. Um, she pulls over. She goes over to another pack and pulls out um, kind of a bundle of arrows with uh, silver tips. There are ten silver arrows in that. Uh, swamp Maya creature, person, thing. I don't really know what you are. The one with the bow, and she points at Remire. You use yes. that in your hand. Yes, you use the the crossbow. I do. She slides over ten silvered crossbow bolts. Uh, I'll keep ten for myself, but those are for you. These will be useful. They will, yes. Uh, 
All right, then. You are no prick. <laughs> that is a very unnerving thing to hear coming out of whatever you are. <sighs> the only other thing is... Hmm, I've got my own weapons. I have some alchemist's fire. I'll take that with me. I want to save my holy water for dealing with Strahd. Um, all right. All right, I've got a few traps we can maybe take with us as well in case we need to lure some of them out. Uh, perhaps interrogate one if we can find one of them. Might be able to get through through to it to find out where the rest of them are. Still, very well. Uh, I'll need a few moments just to gather up my things. Um, Alvaski, I'm assuming you are coming on behalf of the abbot as well? The abbot has entrusted me in assisting you to retrieve that which is precious to him. Wonderful. It's just it's awkwardly is like, great, creepy swamp thing, religious zealot, werewolf, or not werewolf. I still don't quite know where Dog's Body stands. And then Rose, and then is Mark and Irina. Excellent. Well, what a party. So you drink life then before spitting it out. What? Are you, who are you talking to? It's maybe best not to question too much we should probably yes, just keep moving seems to be a strange quirk of this one um do you have a rough idea of where we can begin this search is there anything else you wish to do here uh, before we head out uh irena or tatiana will look at you dog's body do you still need do you still need time to think dog's body i uh for especially with where we're going i just wonder if we need powers to track i don't know if i don't know if that will be needed rose is a good um, tracker but if you feel that you wish to still think on what we discussed that's fine more time i think i need to face up to uh, demons past and it would seem that this uh, Vasilica heading into the domain of the werewolves has given me that opportunity sooner than I thought I understand very well uh, well in that case uh, let us let us go and see if we can let us hope uh, and pray to the Morning Lord that this girl maybe has somehow survived. Let us at least hope that until we find otherwise. And with that, uh, Rose can lead you to roughly where the tracks led off down the side of the, the hill that connects uh, the monastery to Kresik. And you guys can make your way. Um, let me just get up a little map here. The Sweet. areas of Borovia. Okay, uh, leading down to the base of the hill around Kresik, uh, you will basically be traveling through the woods and then heading up into the large hills. Uh, you'll actually be heading northwest of the lake where you first met Esmeralda, where you saw the tower uh, around Lake Baratok. Um, I'm going to need... Uh, you are traveling in the day, so I'm going to need Rose. I need you to make uh, several rolls for me, please, as you're going to basically... You and Dog's Body are going to be leading this tracking effort along with Esmeralda as a backup. Um, so, uh, Rose, if you can make a survival check for me uh, with advantage, because Esmeralda will aid you. Dog's Body, if you can make a perception check with advantage, because you're keen senses. And then if anybody else has anything else they want to do to try and help in locating these this quarry now is the time to say so 24 yeah in 24 terms of uh, roleplay i feel like dog's body would be tracking the perfume mm -hmm. um makes sense i rolled a Trying natural kind of... 20 and a natural one <laughs> well it's a good job you had advantage then um okay <laughs> So Dog's Body's probably out ahead and is sniffing around and giving a vague direction to look in, whereas Rose and Esmeralda are actually checking the ground for tracks and signs of life. Um, Maya, both of you, and Al Vasky, what are you guys doing while they're doing this? Like, are you guys going to... Do does one of you want to keep watch for, like, any critters or beasties that might come up on you? Do you want to try and help in the tracking down? What's the plan? 
can I use my pass without a trace again to give us like the veil of flies to make sure that we're hidden out in the dangerous yeah. woods? Yeah, absolutely. You can cast pass without a trace. Let gives everyone just plus ten to stealth. See if I can see yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is with the pass without a trace, is the flies know the the insects are helping you hide, but they also know not to impede you, right? Like they, so when you go to look, like parts of them disperse enough for you to like look around, and then when you start creeping around again, they and they form like this this barrier uh, to sight. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know. Other Maya, to help Alvaski. That's fine. You don't. You don't have to do anything. This is just an opportunity to do something if you would like. Make it easier. Uh, okay. Alvaski is warrior instinct, just on alert for any threats. Okay, sure. Uh, he. Can you roll. Seems... Um, roll initiative for me, Alvaski. If that's going to be your thing, you're going to keep alert. Yep. The rolling. That's twenty-one. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, and then the Maya. So you just don't, you're going to do nothing. You're just going to follow behind. I'll just, uh, even though other Maya is casting the spell, I'm helping in some way. I'm there doing sure. Maya stuff okay. with Maya. Doing Maya stuff. Um, sure. Mm, sure. Okay. So <clears throat> with Dog's Body leading the head, uh, you begin making your way through the kind of early parts of the wood on the low banks of these rolling, sloping hills. Dog's Body amongst all the all the flora and the fauna it's it's difficult to always get a scent but you do occasionally get whiffs of that perfume and you use that to kind of be like you know over here like this way you kind of guide rose and esmeralda who then manage to find like some evidence of passing for the first sort of 30 minutes you're making your way through these woods and you do find several uh seem to be you know trails or you actually find at uh, parts looks like maybe some rations, pieces of beef jerky, some nuts that have been discarded, um, a small piece of cheese that's fallen onto the ground. Uh, you see signs that space on the ground was cleared away. Uh, whether it was somebody to rest or sit down, you're not quite sure. Um, then tracks continue leading on. Um, you don't see any more sign of anybody else, but this is definitely recent, recent enough to match up to the timeline of two days ago. Um, judging by sort of like some of the mold and things like that that you're looking at on the foodstuffs. You continue on. Uh, Alvaski keeps watch. Uh, Alvaski, roll a d20 for me, please, as you were the one who was keeping alert. Just a straight Five. up d20. Five. The first half an hour, Alvaski, you don't sense any immediate dangers. You're kind of keeping out for the, the beasts of the woods. Nothing seems to disturb you just quite yet. You seem to uh, be uh, at ease as you travel along. Pass Without a Trace seems to keep you hidden from anything that might come after you as well. The second half an hour, the first kind of hour of you guys traveling out, you've made your way uh, to the very base of the hills that begin sloping upwards above Lake Baratok. You find evidence for the first time, Rose and Esmeralda, with Dog's Body leading it. Dog's Body, you first pick up the scent of this floral perfume, but also fresh blood. Not human blood, though. Wolf's blood. You come across a small clearing at the very base of the hills where a few rocky mounds have been piled up, almost like cans, uh, unmarked graves. But here, in a small clearing, you find three wolven carcasses. And they have been ripped in half by something of pure strength has gripped to and <laughs> ripped them in twain. Uh, the body and the blood is scattered everywhere. You find in the ground a broken short sword. It looks fairly plain, maybe something that was passed down between family to family as a, you know, a tool, a weapon of protection, but it lies snapped in half, um, just scattered on the ground. Two of the creeps, two of the people you've been following, these dainty barefoot footsteps and these heavy boots continue heading off, not going up the hill, but actually heading down towards the lake. The one wearing boots is limping. 
Um, this has taken about an hour, so the pass without a trace fades. Um, and you guys will need to make new treks as now you are heading down towards wetter ground. The, the tracks become difficult to follow. So I need, again, perception check from Dog's Body, survival check from Rose with advantage, and then the Alvaski, Maya, and Maya. Anything you guys want to do to try and help in this situation? Hmm. Same for me. God Just damn. alert. Okay. So initiative for you again, please, Alvaski. Uh, 20. Sorry. 20 total, yeah. Can I be <clears throat> looking for any blood or anything? Like if they got in a fight with the wolves and ripped them in half? Sure, uh, you can make another perception check as well. Uh, Dog's body, 19 total was that? Yeah. Are these wolves? Like, are, or are they werewolves? Yeah, the, the three like... bodies, the three bodies that you find are, they're large wolves, but they're wolves. They're not werewolves. Yeah. They are like, you know, large Barovian wolves. And yeah, they've been ripped in half. Like, you know, all their heads cool. been teared off one of them. Um... You don't Sweet. see any cuts or slashes or the only weapon you've seen is this broken short sword. Almost as if they've been done, this has been done by somebody's bare hands. Uh, Maya and Maya. So Maya, perception check, we're looking for blood. Uh, 13. 13, okay. And then re-Maya, anything. Um, how, how like tall is the tree cover? Is it like really high up? Uh, where you are at the moment, so the trees begin thinning out, um, so it's not immensely, it's not heavily covered here. Uh, you can see okay. this kind of like rolling hills to your north. The trees, there are still some around you, but they've thinned out. This isn't a thick, dense forest, but the land begins sloping down towards the lake. Um, uh, you know, it becomes a bit more wet and marshy. Um, can I use my arriving tide nimbus flies and try and hover up over the trees and try and get like a look oh, cool. out sure. over like the horizon okay sure yeah so a couple of things happen so you don't really you do find a little bit of blood Maya Tom uh, dripping in a kind of trail but not any large more not large amounts not like somebody's bleeding or anything like that like somebody maybe had a minor cut and it's it's dripping and bleeding uh, dog's body, the scent of the perfume is, has gone, but instead you have that strong scent of wolf's blood, um, and there seems to still be a trace of it down near the lake's edge. Uh, and kind of reporting this back to Rose and Esmeralda, you do continue finding these little footsteps, these bare little feet. Um, they seem to be carrying something heavy. The little bare feet are carrying something heavy. They weigh deeper into the earth than before, and the heavy boots are dragging as if some they were limping. Um, following these, but it's the Maya that sees this first as you guys are following the tracks. The Maya who's kind of flying above on this cloud of insects, you see uh, kind of sat on the very edge of the lake um, tucked into what appears to be like a little rocky outcropping. There's uh, like a kind of like little pink knit, a picnic blanket strewn over the ground. Um, there is uh, some a little basket with food rations in it and things like that. But sat on it is a young man, maybe sort of 17, 18 years old, covered in blood. Like, you know, neck down, blood smeared across the face, hands covered in it. Um... Uh, and he's just holding what appears to be a wolf's head in his hands. Uh, and he's just looking at the lake, like, blank stared. I, like, sink down on my little cloud. There is a, there's a, a boy, a boy by the lake. Uh, he has a, a wolf's head. Is, is there anyone else there? Is it just the boy? Does he look like he came from Kresik? He's, he, he, he's covered in blood. It's just him. I would advise caution. If he is strong enough to tear wolves apart with his bare hands, well, that's a lot of strength. Certainly the type of strength that a lycanthrope may have, yes? I wish I was that strong, Esmeralda, I really would. Oh, you are only 
not quite a full werewolf, if I understand what you were telling me before. I've it's certainly enough. seen them able to... I've seen them able to do similar wounds to regular people. Would a werewolf rip and tear at its own kind? Tear in the very territorial. If it's a rival, perhaps. Or was simply in the court in the throes of violence and savagery. Evil to the core. You just see her, like, turn around. Well, if they are there... They will either know what happened to the young girl, or they need to be put down. Alvaski, would you recognize someone if they were from the village? Would you be able to talk to them? And do you think they would listen? Recognize, yes. You don't know about the second bit. He's muted. Or oh, he's yes. just being Alvaski. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was muted. I'd like to think that Alvaski has moments of speaking, but not actually speaking. <laughs> I think that's just looks it. at yeah, you. Yeah, there we go. And in his mind, he's speaking, but he's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you see Esmeralda pulling out her hatchet and her rapier and, like, crouches down. If we're going to approach, we should do so quietly. Let's just Perhaps bear in mind the fact that the footprints, there's not seemed to be much of a struggle for most of this journey for whoever this girl is. What we just want to make me. sure that we can... Let's not jump to conclusions. How about this? You and Alvaski here and perhaps Dog's Body or the Mire or somebody else, you go and speak with this boy determine what happened i and perhaps the maya shall move quietly and try and make sure that we have it flanked have the tactical advantage on it should they try and run away or engage you i'll go with you rose i think that would be best i think maybe there's some reasoning you can do as well if i will if come with you as well i would like to at least i would prefer to be there trying diplomacy first okay let's Very try well i will go with i will go with our cheery uh, vampire hunter then and you see as mark moves off with esmeralda have fun with that <laughs> is mark gives you a like does kind of like look at you with a like yeah i know tell me about it what a bitch right like he does kind of like <laughs> look at you like he's on dog's body side like he doesn't want to hang yeah. out with esmeralda he's just doing it because it's the tactical warriors thing to do he he does see the point of like the tactics that esmeralda's proposing he just doesn't like her as a person um can i give him a little bro uh, what about the maya fast, just yeah <laughs> He, it'd probably be more like a kind of like slap on the back like he kind of like you both slap yeah. each other on the back like you know uh, I don't think he's a fist bump kind of guy what about the Maya he wasn't the Maya I wanted to do Zeros. Um, yeah we'll we'll head off with uh, not a prick Esmeralda um, sure so stealth and get stealthy yeah sure alright well Ismark uh, Esmeralda and the Maya can make stealth checks whilst the rest of you all approach Ooh, what do we got? Plus three. Big roll. His mark Incoming. is not particularly stealthy. <laughs> but let's see how everyone else does. Um, Twelve. Hmm. Twelve. Aww. Okay. I got fourteen. Right. So four of you split off and begin kind of using the woods and the little bit of swamp land as cover as you begin making your way around. Meanwhile, Rose, uh, Irina. Dog's body and for Alvaski, you guys approach from the other angle, moving towards this boy, and you begin to see what the Maya had seen. Sat on the sort of like, not on the ex exact bank of the lake, but close enough to it where he can see the waters, and you can now see the broken, ruined tower that you had once occupied and met Esmeralda at uh, on the far shore. Um, just sat on this picnic blanket, this kind of dog's head in his lap, his boots up. You can see he's wearing these big traveler's boots. Uh, his leg has been bandaged, and he's just kind of staring at the lake 
absentmindedly. He does not seem to notice or or care that you're approaching. You're not sure which. Hey there, traveler. Nice kill you got there. What? He just seems to like he he looks around and then he looks at you and his eyes are completely unfocused. He looks very dazed and confused. Um maybe a little bit dehydrated or malnourished. No. It wasn't me. I kill? I didn't kill. I didn't kill. He just kind of like rolls the head around in his hands, getting blood everywhere. You can see it's kind of rotting a little bit. Do you need some help, my friend? You seem to have taken an injury. Ah, uh, no. She fixed my leg. The, the wolves, they hurt it. And then he kind of looks and realizes what he's holding and he throws it down towards the lake and the shore. He's like, ah! And he like looks at his hands properly and like it seems like this conversation is like, he's like, no, no, it, it wasn't it, so much blood. So I, I, I didn't know what to do. I tried to protect with my sword, but they, they snapped it. Their jaws just broke it in half and then... And then everything was a blur. I, I, I... And you can see him, like, beginning to shake and, like, clutch his head. What'd you guys do? Stealth party, Esmeralda is, like, like beginning to, like, move forward with the axe. Like, you can see her, like, <laughs> beginning to move up on this. She sees this kid shaking and she's just like, we don't have much time. Alvaski uh, gets into, like, a fighting stance, ready to engage. We don't have much time here. <laughs> Let's where is she? Him quickly. Where where is she? She 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 went she went to she she said she was going to make them pay for hurting me. She she God, what is she? I thought that she was like I thought she was a person, but no person could do what she did. I, I thought she was just a girl. And you can see he's sobbing, like, openly, just like, <laughs> I don't know what she was. Hey. I didn't know. Hey, 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 hey. Listen to me now. <laughs> what happened? Why did you take her? I d didn't take her. Oh, God, he sees Alvaski. <laughs> he's with the abbot. He's here to kill me. No, nobody is no. here to kill you we want to find out what happened oh you don't understand Please, he does what the just... abbot says the abbot will kill me for what i did for for rescuing her from from his sick castle from his from his sick children like him can he you... points at alvaski can you tell us more we don't understand what you mean you need to <sighs> explain to us she's not a girl she's she's something a, a monster she did that to the wolves. It wasn't me. It wasn't them. She did it. She ripped them in half with her hands. She was protecting you, though? Yes. Yes, I thought... I, we spoke. She. I made her laugh. She doesn't speak much. But she, I could make her laugh. I sang her songs and told her stories. I brought her treats that my mother would make because the abbot wouldn't let her have anything sweet. We talked. She told me about the books and what, what little she did speak. I thought I loved her. I, she's pretty, so very pretty, and she said she liked me, that I was different, that, that uh, she wanted me to rescue her like the prince in her books. So we ran. I, we snuck out. I thought that... We could come down to the lake, maybe get to Valaki or somewhere else. And then the wolves came. I had my father's sword. I, I, I drew it. I thought to fight, but they broke it and, and they scratched me and hurt my leg. And, and then she changed. She changed. Her eyes became red. Red like a fire. And she moved so quickly, like faster than anything I have ever seen. She's small. She's smaller than me, than you. She's no more than 16, 17, but so small. And then her hands 
they went into their flesh like it was butter, and then just teared and flesh and blood became tendons and, and entrails in her hands. She carried me down here. She set me down and said to wait, that she would go and make them pay. And then she went up the hill to where they had come from. Basilica is not a girl. He made her. He made her like he made them. And he points at Alvaski. He wants to bring her back. No, so that we can... you can't. You can't take her back. I don't... He's... He's sick. He claims to be... Uh, this... He claims to be a father, a preacher, but he's not. He's... Something's wrong with him. I've seen it. I've seen the blood in the parts of the monastery he doesn't let anyone visit. He killed things down there. He killed lots of things down there. People that weren't people. Can I position myself between Alvaski and the boy so that if Alvaski sure. was to do anything? Sure. Um, Alvaski, there are certain things that are being said here where there's definitely pain in your mind and there's definitely things that would probably be triggering certain things. Um, yeah, anyone looking at Alvaski, there's certain moments where he's like twinging uh, as if his head hurts. Uh, his stance is kind of warbling a little bit. Uh, but he goes back to it, like, shakes his head. You. In front. Tactical disadvantage. Can I... Yes. Can I? Yes. Yes. Can I cast Zone of Truth around Alvaski? And sure. the boy as well. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, you summon the area, radius. right? Saving throw? The kid's not going to uh, save it. It's more for Alvaski's benefit than mine. Uh, 13. Not very high. You can make it with disadvantage if you want, Trot. Because part of you probably would want to tell the truth, but part of you probably doesn't. What's the roll? Uh, Wisdom. Just a straight up whiz. Wisdom Save. saving throw, DC 13. No, it's a charisma saving throw. DC oh, charisma saving throw. Oh, charisma saving throw. Much better. <laughs> that was Three. a wisdom save. You can you can keep the roll. Oh. I'll roll with disadvantage. Well, yeah, because and then you could just take the, the three. <laughs> yeah. no, oh, my go. God, 15. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, Rose, you know that Alvaski mm. is not affected by it. You can tell that Damn he's it. not affected by it, the spell. There's nothing That's... tactical happening here. I'm just taking the boy to wash the blood off his face. It's not a very pleasant experience. And can I kind of just slowly kind of guide the boy to the lake and, you know, just trying to... The boy kind of... is nervous, but you get the sense that he's too shocked to really resist especially anybody being kind to him he just kind of like goes where you take him like if you try and lead him he's just like following you he's shaking like as he takes a step you know he winces as his injured leg touches the ground but like he is in a state of shock and he's like shuddering around esmeralda is looking very confused um, no longer in a combat stance. She just kind of motions hmm. to the mire and to his mark. Maybe we should. Can I just up. hold my head up, my hand up to Esmeralda, and just, just sure. to keep her there for now, and just mm -hmm. turn to Alvaski and say, "I know that I wasn't successful here, but can you trust me? Do you serve the abbot?" Will you fulfill his task? All I want to do is rid this land of Strad. That's all I want. Then you align the same with the goal. Alvaski, what is going on here? Has he hurt you? Hurt? No. Pain. <laughs> Pain means There's a, a flash 
flash there's a flash alvaski of you lying on a table uh and searing pain cutting through you a blade sharp <sighs> alvaski i can tell that you're not telling us everything you you're lucky to have your own us. skin yes can you tell me more what what was the the blessing that that he gave no, the you? Abbot, you tell me I more about fulfill it? his wishes you're a yes. distraction no we are aligned we have the same goal i just want to make sure that you're okay as a friend i serve the abbot i am protecting that's you a funny word friend is a funny word you had a friend once they were taken to the monastery just before you were where did Wait, you go was that you Where are you now? I'm right here. I'm trying stitch to Stitch by you. stitch, there I go. So he hurt you? No pain. Not anymore. But there was pain. There's always pain. No, no there isn't. I'm fine. Alvaski, we are on your side. Please tell us what's been happening. I we can help. I don't remember. It's all I know is what is now, not then, never then. You don't. The seem... elephant doesn't want to talk about the person in the room. There's no one here but us just now. Can you please be honest? The Maya, I'm just going to say Tom the Maya, because I'm you two are obviously watching this quite intently, studying this thing. You can see more of those stitches where he's in distress, where he's been shaking and wobbling, like the bandages around his legs and robes. You see that same razor thin line around like his legs. You see part of like one crisscrossed up, like, you know, his chest kind of coming up by his neck. There's dozens of these things all over Alvaski's body. Mm. Focus. <clears throat> Focus. The task. The I'm habit. going to take out the sun sword. I'm not going to activate it. I'm just going to mm -hmm. hold the, the handle and say, I have a weapon that will get the job done. The same goal that you want, but I'm not going to hurt you to get that goal. Trust us. Please. Trust is not in dispute. That is not the task. I'm aligned with you. Alvaski, have you ever gone to the pool, to the pond in Kresk? The pool is forbidden. The one by the gazebo. You've not been allowed to touch it, have you? We protect it. We do not look. Rose, I think the abbot knows that something is wrong with Alvaski. I think that... I think I know of a way to help him. I, I think that... I think that there is something wrong with his memories because they're not right. There's a madness at work here. I don't think he, he's hiding anything from us. I think that... I think it's that he can't tell us. Well, I don't want to go back if we can't trust. We can't. There is another weapon potentially out here, that girl. I don't want to fight that. I want that to be on our side, but is that too good to be true? Uh, at this point, Dog's Body, you've kind of finished washing up the boy. Um, would you want to take him back with you to Rose and Tatiana? Or... 
No, I'm just going to stay. Like, how far away is the water's edge? Like, it's not can that I hear far. any of this it's conversation? Like, yeah, 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 you yeah. can hear the conversation. It's like 20 feet away. Mm. Uh, he looks up, um, and the only thing he whispers to you is like, I... She wanted to leave. She... She wanted to leave. I don't... She didn't hurt me. That's all I know. She was terrifying. But... She's not human. But she didn't hurt me. She wanted to protect me. Like your friend said. I... What's your... What's your name, boy? Uh, Dwyer. You'll be safe. I'm not gonna let you go back. You have my trust in it's that. Not, it's not just. It's not just me. It, it, it's not just. It's not just saving me or her. It, it's. It's. There are more people, like him. And he points and like nods in Alvaski's direction. Those children. But also the people of Kresk. They. They follow the abbot because they think that he can save them. That he can protect them from the devil. They think that the abbot is the lesser of two evils. I, I, I don't want to just abandon my mother and my father and my uncles and the other people of Kresk. I don't just want to run away. I, I wanted to help Vasilika escape. Maybe find other people that could, that could come, learn what the abbot has done. I'm guessing they don't go willingly. To the abbot's basement? I don't know. Uh, we just... People come out of the monastery, these children of his. That one is the eldest. I. That one is the first one I remember coming out. Uh, it was maybe four or five years ago. The abbot told, that, told us that Alvaski was his child, his servant, that he would help us, protect us. And then maybe a year later, another one, this time stronger, bigger, with wings. And the year after that, another one, a woman this time, even stronger, bigger. He's getting better at making them, conjuring them. I, d I don't know what they are. But Vasilika was there long before. Vasilika was there before I was born. She's... I don't know. She looks young, but she can't be. Mark. As yes. a blood hunter... Yes. I have Hunter's Bane, which means I have advantage yep. to track fey fiends or undead, as well as on intelligence checks to recall information about them. Sure. Would dog's body in this capacity if i was to make a roll would mm -hmm. he know anything about these monstrosities that are being created um you can make a roll okay uh so i have advantage and it's an intelligence check i rolled a 16 highest uh plus one yeah 14 14 total uh, no, sorry, I rolled 17. 16 plus a 1. Plus one. <laughs> Math is not happening for me tonight. I'm glad we're not in combat yet. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't this doesn't sound like any undead or fiend that you've ever heard of. I mean, you saw those. You saw the abbot's children. They were angels. They they didn't give you any impression that they were anything but it doesn't sound like any monstrosity or any of the things you listed. It doesn't sound like any of them. Yeah, yeah, okay. <sighs> Maya, you've been pretty quiet. I want to give you guys a chance if there's anything you want to do, or are you just oh. happy watching this all go down? I'm loving watching it. However, I'm I'm also trying to piece together exactly what Alvaski is. So, like, I've seen the stitches and everything mm -hmm. piece together. Uh -huh. um, and uh, is there something I can do? I don't know, history or nature or something. A medicine check. That ain't human. Um, to see if I can pinpoint exactly what he is. 
with the knowledge of the stitches check, yeah. and this Yeah, you can make a medicine this. check. Sure. Uh, I was joking about medicine. I've got plus seven with it, so I'll go with it. I mean, you understand oh, bodies, right? Fourteen. Fourteen. It's kind of a mixture of your connection to the land, your knowledge of, like, bodies. The Maya is made up of many different bodies. The Maya is this kind of primal life essence that knows how to make a body move and how to make a body work. That's how you can function. Looking at Alvaski, there is a... He is a, he is a facsimile. He is a, a copy of life. He is not like the Maya where you are something that has been brought, has been reanimated with real life. Like, you are a living creature because you are made of living matter. You're not undead, even though you might look it. You still have, like, insects and moss and, like, living things amongst you. Alvaski isn't undead either. He doesn't have the same kind of dark aura. He doesn't exude the same pressure on the living world. It's almost like looking at a body stuck stitched together and then a piece of light has been used to fill that body with warmth to make you know his blood move to make his eyes function like it's it's not natural life but nor is it undead uh he is he is a creature like you have never really seen before um but not a person in fact i would say that at this point, the Maya would probably be able to sense that there are multiple people. Alvaski is not one living soul. Alvaski seems yep. to be many souls stitched together. Cool. And cool. bound by light. Kind of like the light fuses it together. I knew it. I knew it. Um, cool. <laughs> I, mean, I love this. It. The whole just fan in me on that info. is just like, oh, I, mean, I love this. I love this so much. Anyway. Other Maya, you know that as well now, because, I mean, yeah. Uh, did you want to do yeah. anything with that? Mamaya. Mamaya. Remaya. I think Maya would just assume that everybody else already knows about it, right? Like... <laughs> like humans, okay. humans, humans, but, but humans be humans. Humans do human things. There's many types of humans. Okay. Uh, well, this is the, the thing: world. is you know, it's in not defense a human. of the party, in defense oh, of yeah. the party, this one ain't human. <laughs> this one is it's not, not human. It. Yeah. yeah. This one is many humans put this together and then sort of it. glued together. Many yeah. Humans. <laughs> many humans, but with one body. Kind of mm, like the mind. Re, re, just real quick, how would we feel yeah. about this? I was going to say, like, this is there's an element of the Maya to this thing. True. But like we've seen like raven people, we've seen dog's body, like there's many different shapes and forms of life. It's like... Oh no, I, yeah, I get that. Dog's body is still yeah. human, but also kind of wolfy. Alvaski, he's like seven I'm humans, ASMR. maybe more. Technically ASMR. I'm just wondering, does the Maya approve of someone reanimating, quote unquote, dead <laughs> and stitching together into one weird homunculus thing true it oh is. did he take oh. them from the land oh. he takes them from <laughs> Maya <laughs> we are being starved Tom <laughs> <laughs> the abbot owes us food now <laughs> he owes us food now <laughs> guys he doesn't owe you food he owes you grubby Grubby. Yes. Oh, I, I got buy I another we... shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you wouldn't so, yeah. approve. Well, I am yes, going to because I I have another thing I need to get ready for, um, and I need to take a quick break uh, to go to the bathroom. So we will. There's going to be what. As you guys are all discussing this, as the Maya's thinking about this, Dog's Body, as you're speaking to uh, Dwyer, as Alvaski and Rose are having this conversation, we hear echoing from the mount, from the kind of hills behind you, a long, powerful echoing. <gasps> oh! And that's where we'll end today's episode. God damn. Let the dogs God out. Damn. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh damn. Translation. Prick! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> translation pricks pricks yeah plural now prick. we know we know now you know. man that was um, so cool that was so cool I yeah. sure. oh, horrific cool but in the best way and would you believe yes. it the one person who's going to give us an army oh he's a weird creepy evil freak too God well, damn. I mean, so oh, far, man. he's not done anything to you guys. So far, he's like, Never what's the problem? Saw I mean, that. He means well. Yeah, well, <laughs> he yeah, means well. He's been the greater good. You know, yeah, come yeah. on, the guys. Yeah. It's the good of the village. The Think about that. Good. What's in it for him? The greater what's in good. it for him? Who's he going to turn and make into his giant army in Ravenloft once Strahd's Who gone? Knows? Huh? Huh? <laughs> All I know. a very good... Three, those are great questions. I want you to save yeah. them. And next time you see the abbot, you can ask him that. How about that? Yeah. Pin it. Well, at the same time, Wait, though, he has, a, he has a bitch in pond, though. And I do he has like got a bitch in pond. I really like that pond. <laughs> well, also, like, <laughs> that, as, that liquid hole as, is great. As Tatiana would know, Tatiana knows that if you want to help Alvaski, that pond's one of the ways to do it. Um, yeah. And she knows it'll be a big help it. to Dog's body. Yeah, you know. And Alvaski, so, you are going to get dunked. Get dunked? A uh, second baptism. <laughs> dunked uh, with some. that, my dear friends, that's where we're going to end there. I'm going to have to shoot um, cool. it, before we do right. readings and stuff like that. I've got to get ready because I've got this Miko thing at 11. I've still got to get my stream set up for that, and I've got to take a quick break as well. So I'm going to dash out Absolutely. here. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we will be back for D, D high rollers on sunday for a rois it's gonna be a big one as well if you've not caught yeah. up come and watch it anyway because it's gonna be this is the big uh meeting with the leaders of of a rois. so i think that this is gonna be like oh, a big God. new start fresh new start definitely a new chapter good. that's for sure yeah. yeah um so and a whole new a whole new place to see we're gonna be going to a place that we've never been to before as well so it's gonna be a good one um nice. exciting times and yeah, uh, come back in an hour or head over to my channel or Code Miko's channel in an hour to watch me run a little special. And it's going to be very silly and it's going to be very chaotic. Solo D&D one shot with her. Uh, until then, I will see you on Sunday. These guys are going to stick around and read some notif some stuff out. Uh, I will yeah. see you soon. All right. Chris Trot, put good a luck. picture of me. A good Have, a great time. Have, fun. Have a great time. It's fine. It's yeah. going to be uh, frozen right, anyway. So freeze in place. With a nice face. Right. Do a cool pose. <laughs> Aww, that's a nice face. That's a nice face, yo. Wow. Look at him. Wow. Aww, look at this wholesome DM. Uh, I want I want a picture of him after he finishes his stream with Code Miko. Like a before and after. <laughs> Man, I didn't expect it to be so good. Hey, it's a good picture. Yeah, oh. man, there's something, there's something oh. sinister there. There's oh, darkness in those it. eyes. Oh, here the it comes. truth behind the smile. What, just like the abbot? <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh no, he's our abbot. Yes. <gasps> oh, no. He's gonna homunculus us. Think about it. <laughs> We're gonna get He makes us play different people. You know. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Metal alchemist time. It mm. was so yeah. hard for me to not just <laughs> splurge everything about Alvaski. I know, uh. yeah. <laughs> Alvaski's how, great. How, right. Such a good I character. I have to ask, how are you doing these weird little sayings that he does? Have you oh. got like this random word generator or something? Or is that just coming out of you? And you're just Secret. saying every word. <laughs> oh, okay. There's a few okay. things I've been noting down, right? So I've got things right. that are like, this is creepy. Type that down <laughs> okay. for later. Yeah. And then other ones that I'm just just saying shit. <laughs> is, uh, yeah. is the other nice. ones just your brain oh, after that ten years of hat films? Yeah, yeah like, it's just me. One, <laughs> like you, this is the real me. You suck up life and spit it out or something like that. Mm -hmm. it was weird. Yeah. Esmeralda, you drink life. I like that one. And then spit it out. I liked. I wrote. Oh. I wrote this one because I liked it so much. Stitch by stitch, there I go. I thought that. That's was just a uh, like Chris that. Trot. Yeah. yeah, type. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. Mwah. Oh, it's just spooky. creepy. <laughs> so yeah. Um, stitch by stitch, hey, there I go. Tom, would you guys? Do you would you guys like or, some donations? Oh. Sure. You want yeah. Some? yeah. 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 All right then. I'll read yeah. them out then. Like the actual Strad vampire has donated a quarter hundo like with oh. paying bills hey. with Strad. Water bill? Nope. Don't want running water. Gas bill? Sure. 
Car payment? Ha! I can fly. NordVPN? Sure. Not sponsored. Live vampire <laughs> cowboys installments? Yes, please. Rent to the mire? <laughs> ah, what is it going to do? Evict me? Yeah, we fucking are, Strad. Yeah, we fucking yeah. are. Yeah, we are. Um, Become in landlords. Moist, in moists and shaloms. We are landlords. <gasps> uh, in yeah. moists and shaloms. Oh, don't know. Ha, made you say that? Yeah, I just said it three times. Newton here. <laughs> Great. Just you a like wee per duple for Mark and Manu. <laughs> How much do I have to dono for Mark to dress up as a tall vamp mama for Halloween? Do Probably my words much. confuse the Tom? No. Too bad. You chose to be the reader. I choose to be your word pooper. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably not much at all. It would probably happen anyway. Uh, is, yeah. What's her name? Lady Dimitrescu? Dimitrescu? Demetrius? Demetrius? Uh, Ligaratus has donated uh, a, a full ass hundo. Um, Crikey, thank after, you. After also, wow. don also gifting 25 subs as well, I spotted earlier. Jeez. Um, so thank you very much, Ligaratus. Uh, Ligaratus, aka Jirachi, the best Jirachi ever made. Hey guys, best Jirachi. this week has been hard for me as it's the one year anniversary of my sister's accident. So I'm trying to do some acts of kindness in her memory. Uh, you all have helped me make it through the past year. So consider this as a token of my gratitude. Um, I'm very, very sorry to hear that, Ligaratus, but mm -hmm. thank you very much uh, as well. Thank you um, for gifting the subs to people. It's very thank kind. You. It's very, yeah, very it's kind. Mega subs too. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Ligaratus. Um, I hope all is okay. Uh, Raz the Almighty has donated with so happy to be able to tune in to this week's episode of Team Trauma and the Mire. Yeah, we're fine. We're cool. Um, thank you very much. The uh, Varus has donated with no message. Thank you very much. And Fail has donated with, I just wanted to say that was an amazing episode. Horrifying, but also excellent in every way. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Fail. Um, and alongside the Ligaratus, we also had some gifted subs from Colo Colo Man, <laughs> Nozarashi1993. We had it's gone. And we can't look at it. I'm covering that up. <laughs> and Nightjar, Nightjar again picked a best sub message, and this was from HL Mad Larkin. Which says, you mean you don't like rep replacement Matt Toffolo? You should be nicer to Tom. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it, was that a real donation or was that, you know? That was a sub message. Uh, that, was, that was a real one, a real sub message. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, everyone. That is, that is all. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Fuck's sake! <laughs> so, um. I was about to put my webcam thing over it so I'm not looking at it. It's fine, it's okay now. Don't look at it, really. I don't, don't look at it, really. I, don't, it's, yeah. I don't trust it. I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is this is this because Mark said earlier that Matt was his favorite player? Is this is this is it just He's seeping into your bloodstream or something? Sunday night. This is it. Yeah, this he is. is. Gonna be, oh. This is going to be. He's going to be too PK. distracted. He's going to forget <sighs> this all happened after the Code Miko thing. Yeah. I'm in a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. He's ascended to Code Mika now. He's ascended. Exactly. Like he's leaving us. In he the doesn't dust. care about like, us. He's never going to come back to us. Yeah. He's never coming back to us now. <laughs> Someone in chat just said, "Oh, look at Dandelion." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Last one, one of the season. Arm. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, no. uh, Damn, uh, <laughs> Must be the last one of the season. season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at uh, that. Anyway, uh, is that all of them, Mark Tom? Mark normally ends the streams, you know? 
<laughs> yeah, oh, right. we don't. Yeah, we don't, we don't know how to end streams without him. I feel like we're untethered. Um, we need we need hey. assistance. <laughs> hey, thanks. Thanks for watching Curse of Strahd on a thanks, Thursday. Everybody. We'll Thanks back so on much Sunday. for watching yep. Curse of Strad. We'll yeah. be back on Sunday at 5 p.m. for Rois, and it's a big episode. Katie, I was so make doing sure the outro. Follow us on Twitter at High Rollers D D to find it's out any now. more stream information. Bam. Done. Woo. Very nice. Bam. Bam. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bam. Great job, everybody. Uh, any Good words job. from Mark or? No, nothing. Nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. No. All right, no, bye, he's too, too busy being a potion seller. <laughs> See you someday. Everyone wave goodbye. Bye. Everyone